In this video, we're going to be discussing hydrostatic pressure and hydrostatic force, and we're also going to introduce the idea of center of pressure, which is the location where the hydrostatic force would act on a submerged surface. And we're going to explain this by introducing the concept of pressure fields. So to begin with, we have a relatively simple example where we have a retaining wall, and that retaining wall is retaining water on the left-hand side. We have the height of the water labelled H subscript W, and we also have an indication of the location of centre of pressure, which is a distance H bar below the free surface of the liquid. So in earlier tutorials, we introduced the formula for hydrostatic pressure, where hydrostatic pressure equals density times gravity times height. So hydrostatic pressure is going to be higher when the density of the fluid is higher, and it's also going to be higher when we're at a greater depth below the free surface. What we're basically saying is the hydrostatic pressure is the pressure as a result of the effects of gravity on that liquid. If there was no gravity, there would be no hydrostatic pressure. We see the same thing on the Earth's surface because it's the gravitational pull that attracts our atmosphere to the outside of our planet. So hydrostatic pressure is a product of the gravitational pull. Now on the right hand side of my diagram, I've provided an indication of how the pressure varies as we move further from the free surface. Now at the free surface, the pressure will be zero gauge or atmospheric pressure. And the further down we go, we see that the pressure increases. So if we wanted to determine the force resulting from the hydrostatic pressure, then we would need to take the average pressure or the pressure halfway down our retaining wall. And then we would need to multiply by the cross-sectional area that's in contact with the fluid. So therefore, the thrust force, which acts horizontally, is a half rho g h, because that's the hydrostatic pressure halfway down the retaining wall, multiplied by the area. And that's the area of the wall that's in contact with the fluid. Now this is where things become a little bit more complicated, because the hydrostatic force doesn't actually act at our horizontal centre line here. Another name for that horizontal centre line is the centroid. But our force doesn't act there. In actual fact, our force acts at the centre of pressure. We saw in the level 3 tutorials that this distance, in this scenario, from the bottom of the retaining wall to the centre of pressure, is actually a third of the height of the water. Therefore, h bar is two thirds of the height of the water. And we'll see how that's determined later. The reason the centre of pressure is always below the centre line is because if we examine the effects of the pressure field above the centre line and compare it to the effects of the pressure field below the centre line, then the pressure field below the centre line is going to cause a greater turning moment. And the pressure field above the centre line causes a smaller turning moment. So we don't have static equilibrium if the force were to act at the centroid. By contrast, if we were to examine the effects of the pressure field above the centre of pressure, and compare that with the turning effects of the pressure field below the centre of pressure, then those two turning moments actually balance each other. We have static equilibrium. So the centre of pressure is actually the point where the sum of the pressure fields acts. It keeps our system in static equilibrium. If you prefer a more visual representation, then from the centre of pressure upwards, we have a triangle, and the area of that triangle is going to be exactly the same as the area of this trapezium. Each of those represents the sum of the pressure field. Let's see how things change when the surface is fully submerged. OK, so the diagram on the left-hand side gives us an example of when our submerged surface is fully below the surface of the water. We still have the height of the water, h subscript w, 
and we still have the distance to our centre of pressure, h bar. But what we notice in this scenario is that our centre of pressure is actually much closer to the centroid of the surface, and I'll explain why in a moment. But with reference to the graph on the right hand side, we see that as depth increases, and by depth in this example we're referring to the distance to the top of our surface here, so not to be confused with h bar or hw, but as that distance increases, what we see is the distance between the centroid of the shape and the centre of pressure decreases. So again referring to our diagram, the centroid of the shape sits somewhere around here, and we can see that the distance between that centroid and the arrow that represents centre of pressure is much smaller. And this is just a representation that the deeper we go, or the greater that distance h from the free surface, the closer and closer that centre of pressure gets to the centroid. However, it will always be below the centroid. So the reason the centre of pressure gets closer to the centroid is because the difference in the effects of the pressure field above the centroid and below the centroid is now much smaller. So above the centroid, we have pressure causing a turning moment here, and we have pressure due to the full height of the fluid causing a turning moment here. But that wouldn't quite allow our system to be in equilibrium because the turning moment below the centroid would still be slightly larger. The effects are somewhat diminished because we already have a large body of fluid above the submerged surface. So instead, if we refer to our centre of pressure, at the centre for pressure, the clockwise turning moment caused by this body of fluid here is going to be perfectly balanced by the anti-clockwise moment caused by this body of fluid here. The system's going to be in equilibrium. So to summarise, hydrostatic pressure is the effect of gravity pulling on the fluid, and hydrostatic force is the effects of that pressure across the area of the submerged surface that's in contact with that fluid. Centre of pressure is the point where the total sum of the pressure field acts. Therefore, the sum of the pressure field between our centre of pressure and the top of our submerged surface is equal to the sum of the pressure field between the centre of pressure and the bottom of our submerged surface. Those pressure fields are as a result of the hydrostatic pressure above each of those given locations. If you preferred the more visual representation, then this area here is going to be equal to this area here, where the line between those two trapezium is at the centre for pressure.